while we have this incredible sight in front of us a herd of elephants walking across the open area complete with all the little ones running along with them and this has been one of my favorite things so far about being in the Mara is the elephant sightings because you can sit and watch them and you see them from far away and often everywhere you look you see a different herd of elephants look at the little one racing off ahead now, apparently when the migration arrives and they are already on well on their way as you may or may not have gathered from Brent's excitement yesterday but the migration is arriving and apparently when they do when the wildebeest and the zebra get here apparently the elephants all disappear and they they quite literally head for the hills apparently they go up into the mountains and the hills that are dotted around here we don't, I suspect it's because it's just lots of stuff around them, lots of noise, and it is noisy. That constant meh, 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 meh. I imagine that after a while it gets a little bit tedious for the elephants with their sensitive hearing and with them being constantly aware of what's going on around them. I think the movement, hey little one, what are you doing? Trying to suckle. The one thing I've been thinking about being out here is that our prospects of actually watching a live birth are so greatly increased because you can actually view the animals from far enough away that they can feel comfortable with you being around them at that relatively sensitive time. And I have seen pregnant zebras everywhere, I've seen pregnant elephants everywhere and they of course don't have a set breeding season. Are we just going to move forward a little bit? This is the fun thing about there being two of us, which we couldn't do before. There's two of us, so I have to turn my back and trust Brent's driving, which at this point, I guess I have to do. I do. Um, and we can actually move while I'm talking to you and while I'm standing up here with our poor Dave having to try and dismantle the camera and bring it into the vehicle itself. Here we go, we're gonna get a nice view. We're actually on our way to a lions. I don't know which lions. I s I've met the Ridge Pride and I've seen six young males and I think that's it. I have not yet met the Angama Pride. I've heard tales that there are three new cubs. Alice, are you still there? Have I got you? Yes, I have got you. Brilliant. I'll I live in terror of losing communication. At the moment, we're doing everything via Skype. Here we go. Aren't these vistas amazing? Now, oh, Krista, you're wondering, from what I can hear, you're wondering about the foot structure of the elephant, which unfortunately, while they're wandering around in the long grass, is going to be very difficult for Dave to show you. But you're wondering about what the bottom of their feet are made of and how the process of their toenails and everything works. Elephants have amazing feet. They actually technically, in a way, walk on their tiptoes, the way that their foot is structured. But below the bones, the way that the bones are sort of positioned almost on the toes themselves, sitting on the phalanges, they also sit on top of a sponge that helps to cushion and if you watch an elephant as it steps you can see their feet spreading as they walk to sort of distribute the weight evenly and it actually makes them very very quiet and the skin of the the elephant's foot is just like normal skin but it's very very tough and very thick uh, whilst it is possible for something to become embedded in their feet it hardly ever happens because the soles of their feet are tougher than Brent's believe it or not they are very solid and very, very thick. The toenails grow just like normal toenails. So they, just like your fingernails, they grow out of cuticles. They're obviously much thicker than ours. Um, they are very, very solid, but they do have toenails. Sometimes five and sometimes four. It depends on the elephant. They don't often lose them either, but they do grow continuously and then obviously they will wear down as the elephant wanders along and they use them for digging. <laughs> what is that little elephant doing at the back there? Can about, to pop out. Hmm? about to pop out. No. Oh, you little one. There's another view of that one on the right there, Dave. Now, 
Now, uh, Jane, you want to know about the animals that migrated during the migration. So obviously, the, the movement of the elephants isn't really technically a migration because they're here all year round. They'll move where resources send them, but as I said, they'll move up into the mountains when the herd comes through. But the, the big migration, the main animals that are involved are the wildebeest, the zebra, and the Thompson's gazelle, with a few other animals that occasionally get caught up along the way. But it's essentially mostly wildebeest. And then next will come the numbers of zebra that come through, although the zebra walk ahead. And you probably will get about 400,000 odd zebra, possibly even more. I mean, ultimately, the total migration can be over 200, 2 million animals moving through in this direction. Oh, it really is an enormous number of animals. And the whole process is going to be fascinating to watch. Obviously, I've never been here to see a migration before, and it's going to be something completely different. You also get the local residents. This is what Brent was talking about yesterday. The local permanent residents. Some wildebeest stay behind. Some zebras stay behind. They don't migrate. But when the herds start to make their way across from Tanzania into Kenya, the wildebeest that have been here permanently come and join up with the rest of the herd. Obviously males searching for mating opportunities. And it's amazing to see how excited they get. They go racing. I cannot wait to show you what the male wildebeest are like during this migration. It's utter chaos. I can understand, though, why the elephants, if you're a resident here, it might get a little tiresome. All of these creatures all over the place all of a sudden. All right, I... I'm going to head on. We've got to go racing across towards the lions. What I'll do for now is send you all the way back across to Juma.